Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven You here for another Legacy stream. Okay, so today's video is sponsored by Sean D. And Sean donated to see a Harmonic Prodigy deck in action. And Harmonic Prodigy is a 1-3 that if you control a... Sorry, let me rephrase that. If an ability of a Shaman or another wizard you control triggers, it triggers an additional time. And Sean told me to build around this card. And originally he sent this idea of like, hey, what if we use this and we use it to make it so that we get more magecraft triggers, and that was a cool direction. But I think it had too many moving parts, so instead I kind of like veered more towards the like tribal side of the equation with the triggers. Um, so let me show you what I put together. Um, it's, it's a little nuts. So here, here is the, the card in question, and this is a human wizard, but every other card in the deck is going to be a shaman. And so my idea was, what if we just kind of like crank the triggers up to 11? Like, let's see where we can take this. So the, the card the deck is primarily built around is Rage Forger. When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each other shaman you control. Okay, note to self. This is probably going to be two plus one plus one counters on every shaman, all right? And then the second ability, whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter attacks, you may have it deal one damage to target player or planeswalker. How about we make it two damage? So the idea here is that we combine Harmonic Prodigy with Rage Forger to one-shot our opponent with one very large attack. So what's the supporting shell here? The supporting shell is... Okay, I'm going to keep talking, and I realized a problem with the deck, and we're going to have to make some changes. Okay, the, the supporting shell is going to be ways to tutor for Rage Forger, ways to ramp out Rage Forger uh, with Goblin, Anarchaeomancer, and Ignoble Hierarch, and then ways to either get it back or draw towards it. Supporting that shell, we are going to have uh, what could be a very absurd amount of life gain, as well as Collected Company. Um, now, um, I just threw together this mana base for the deck, and I thought, oh, Ancient Ziggurat is the perfect card for this deck, because we're a tribal deck that also wants to be able to cast a wizard. Um, but this isn't going to cast Collected Company. So, hold on a second. Ahem. Much better. Um, I just subbed out the Ancient Ziggurats for four fetch lands, uh, two red ones and two green ones. That should round out the, the mana base a little bit better. Okay, um, this is the, the importance of making sure you go over your mana base and, uh, you know, make sure that it actually works for what you want it to do. Because Phil almost made a rookie mistake. But I'm too good for that. Nah, JK, I make mistakes in deck building all the time. All right, so kind of our, our big splashy bomb at the end of the, the curve is Collected Company, which is, a, for all intents and purposes, a turn three play in this deck most of the time, since we have both Ignoble Hierarch and Goblin Anarchaeomancer to accelerate it. So like that's, that's what's going on there with this card. Like playing a four drop that doesn't win the, the game on the spot is a little questionable in Legacy. This is a three drop, which hopefully usually ends the game with Rage Forger. Fingers crossed. As far as the sideboard, we get to do something really cute. The so Reclamation Sage is a perfectly respectable and playable legacy card, and we get to double up on the triggers because this is indeed a shaman. So if we get paired against, you know, an Urza Saga deck, uh, an Affinity deck of some kind, uh, we're going to get to do some pretty cute things there. Um, otherwise, we're leaving our interaction in the sideboard. So we have Lightning Bolt to bring in versus the Fair decks, and Thorn of Amethyst to bring in versus the sort of like unfair spell-based decks, and Leyline for the Graveyard decks. Just very straightforward sideboard. Um, I want to talk about a deck-building philosophy thing here. So normally, when you're playing a legacy deck, you need to interact with the opponent. And if you don't interact with the opponent, you're frequently just going to lose to what they are doing. I have intentionally chosen not to interact with my opponent in game one and to just kind of try to do my own thing. I, I think this strategy is a bit questionable in the first place, and I think the best way to make it successful is to lean fully and commit to, you know, commit to the meme rather than try to, like, compensate for the weaknesses of it. So I think by just, like, 
jamming all of these creatures, which are going to be uncounterable, which are going to double up on their triggers. I think leaning into that as hard as I can is better than, say, trying to do thorns in game one or lightning bolts in game one. I'd like, I'm, I'm throwing this idea out here, and we're going to see if it sticks. All right, if you're new to the channel, please consider for sub please consider subscribing for Legacy Vintage and Modern Content seven days a week. If you are a subscriber already, please consider throwing me a like. It's the easiest free way to support my content. If you want to check out this deck list, check out the top decked uh, deck list in the video description. And uh, let's battle. If you've got any sweet ideas, I'll be happy to see them. That information's in the video description as well. Okay, so opening hand leads on Ignoble Hierarch and then plays a Rage Forger and then either another Rage Forger or a Collected Company. Yeah, I am I am down with this. Uh, this is this is gonna be fun one way or another. I am going to have a a, a fucking hell of a time this league. <laughs> what you got for me? Can you keep up with this level of spice? Ah, uh, Wasteland. We will ignore that. Either I sure. Oh yeah, that's uh that's a great draw. That means I just get to do my Coco thing. Alright, so let's fetch a mountain. There we go. And let's play a Rage Forger. <laughs> it begins. I don't know exactly how fast we're going, but we're going. I, I do want to figure out like which Aetherwile Wasteland deck my opponent is. This might tip us off, but like human could be death and taxes or human. Excuse me? Pirate? I love it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what else I am in love with? I am in love with the Coco. Let's go. Okay, I see. So I'm going to get an, an Elvish Visionary and an Eternal Witness here. Okay. So I am going to return the Coco to my hand. Yes. And I will draw a card. Oh, baby. That's a double Rage Forger. We are in business. All right, so my opponent's Aether Vial ticks up. We'll see what else they have going on in their pirate deck. I didn't expect round one to be dual decks like pirates versus shamans, but here we are. So my best draw would probably just be like a Harmonic Prodigy. Because then I can play like Harmonic Prodigy, Prodigy, Rage Forger, make my creatures giant. Okay. You've got some first strike. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> Okay, Burning Tree Emissary is cool. Like, that's just free. Do, do I want to Collected Company immediately? Probably. So let's, let's fetch. We can get the other basic out of the deck. Go ahead and play the Burning Tree Emissary. I will get my two mana. I will use this to Coco. Um... Uh, I'm going to get a Goblin and Archaeomancer, and the next turn I can double Rage Forger and go for a kill. And I think I'll just pick up an Elvish Visionary here. Actually, maybe an Ignoble Hierarch is totally fine. Then I can get some attacks going this turn. I am, I am okay in the gas department. So I can attack with Rage Forger, the 4-4. Four four. Or I can attack with this. Eh, nah, you know what? Let's just let's just chill. I'm not I'm not in a hurry here. I I feel like next turn is just my my combo turn and I get to do my thing. Okay, so they get to snipe that, but it's only this turn, right? I almost feel like they should have waited a turn and like done it on their turn and then like actually been able to pay for it with four mana. Um, but I I don't know what else they have going on. I also just like glad I didn't attack into six power worth of first strike. Oh, more pirates are coming. Oh, more pirates are not coming. Okay. They are holding up mana. All right. So, how how brave am I? I can Coco again, and like 
try to keep hitting the harmonic thingy and if i hit the harmonic thingy or goblin and archaeomancers these just become better and better there is probably a degree of greed that is too great and i am probably doing it here um but here we are all right what are we hitting all right essence warden and goblin and archaeomancer yes i will take both okay so we're gonna gain a lot of life so now, for one mana, I Rage Forger, and gain life, and I put counters on all of my creatures. Then I Rage Forger, and I put all of my creatures, put counters on all my creatures, and gain some life. And then we're going to go to combat, and I presume we just turn all this shit sideways and let my opponent figure it out. <laughs> oh my god oh my gosh all right so i assume i can always yes to these yes oh my god the laser <laughs> i <laughs> this is everything i wanted <laughs> oh my god <laughs> So no, no sideboarding? Do I, do I want a lightning bolt for my opponent's pirates? The first strikers are a little annoying. I don't know. How, how big are my opponent's creatures going to be? Fuck it. Deck's perfect. Why change anything? Like, I basically only saw Harmonic Prodigy from my opponent, so it's really hard for me to say, like, how much I should be sideboarding, if anything. Like, it's possible I want one Rex Sage in there to destroy Aether Vials or whatever. And like my opponent apparently has ancient tombs as well. Um, but until I get more information, I think I'm just gonna continue to rock my primary game plan of like get a bunch of creatures all over the board and uh hope it kills my opponent somehow. Okay, I'm not sure about this hand. Like this can tutor for the rage forger. Um but I kind of feel like this hand is weak. I'm gonna mulligan this. Um this hand is very good in terms of the cards that are here, but is lacking in mana. Um, let's hope the five is better. Oh, this is a very good five card hand. Um, I am uh, presumably not ready for the Coco. And I think my curve is one, two, three. And so I'll throw back the Goblin and Archaeomancer. I get to start on two different basic lands. All right, what do you have off your basic? Oh, okay, so I want the lightning bolts next game. Honestly, it should have occurred to me that Ragaman was a pirate. Like, of course that's going to be what's central to my opponent's deck. We're going to get basics this game because I know my opponent has Wasteland. Okay. Oh, that's a good pirate. Huh. What Oh, homo. oh, this is the wildest game of Legacy that I've played in a while. I have so much respect for what my opponent is doing. Oh, they can get my Goblin and Archaeomancer. Mm. So the good news is I'm going to have a 1-3. <laughs> the bad news is, like, Double Strike might get real weird. Um, let's get a Mountain here. And let's do... Uh, the Harmonic Prodigy thing. I guess a little awkwardly, like, Harmonic Prodigy is a human wizard, and Rage Forger is, is putting, thing, putting counters on shamans, and this is our only non-shaman creature. So if I draw something like an Elvish Visionary or an Eternal Witness or something, I would actually probably rather do that than just, like, play out a naked Rage Forger. I mean, like, I'm gonna hop in the way. Show me your trick. Show me your secrets. Oh, we just straight up did it. Unexpected. <laughs> it's another fucking monkey. <laughs> I mean, I, I will 100% take the two for one. That is like killing two monkeys with one human wizard. I mean, that seems pretty good for a wizard, you know? Hmm. Okay. So I think I need to just play out a naked 2-2 two -two here. Unfortunately. Um, I th think I'm going to lean towards this land here. 
and the trigger does nothing. Just a little on the back foot here. So I can make this trade, and then hopefully my opponent just like either runs out of gas or gets stalled on lands. Yeah, they want they want the trade. I I accept, unfortunately. I could get some sick mid combat collected company blowouts. I think I will be bluffing collected company. If uh, well, I'm playing that. I need to play it to make the potential like elvish visionary based lines better. It's possible that if I just like passed with four mana open, my opponent would not attack in. But like, what are they gonna do if their plan is to like not attack into four open mana, right? Oh, a dashed Ragavan. Well, I will be trading. I'm gonna take four. All right, uh, it's gonna be a nail biter here. Shaman. And this is basically a free card. So I'm just gonna hold it. Like, I don't intend to basically ever attack next turn. And I'd like my opponent to be thinking about collected company here. No thought. No thought given to the Coco. That's fair. I I think I'd be attacking in as well. Uh, well. No, you're not a shaman. You're a human wizard. I know this. I will make double mana. Oh yes, my four mana. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I, I can't do anything with it. So my, if my opponent attacks in with both creatures, I block one with Harmonic Prodigy. And I kill it. And then the other one uh, eats my Burning Tree Emissary. So we take a one for one trade. Alright. I accept your terms. And goodbye. And goodbye. Blazing Volley. Okay, well, I can I can jump block for another turn. This is the good news. I need a Coco. All right, Lightning Bolt to the face. I might have killed the Ignoble Hierarch and killed me in hot combat. Call me old-fashioned, though. All right, the Lightning Bolt's in now that, like, I know what's going on with the Ragavans. Um, what don't I want here? Burning Tree Emissary doesn't line up super well versus the like, 2-1 first strikers. You have power and toughness? You do. You, so you trade with Ragavan. Alright. I think I want to cut two of these. All of them, maybe? I think I just cut all of them. Makes me a little lighter on hits for Coco. Um, but I think that's probably fine at the end of the day. Okay, I will be keeping this hand. Um, I put this on Shaman. It lets me cast um, both of my early spells. Shaman! Now let's get this Essence Warden out there ASAP. And then on turn two, I will probably Lightning Bolt a one drop and play Flamekin Harbinger if my opponent plays one. And if they don't play one, I'll just ram out Harmonic Prodigy and start going to town that way. Alright. Pirate. And Aether Vial. Sure. Don't mind having multiple Lightning Bolts. I think this is just Harmonic Prodigy and pass. Gain my life. I do get two life immediately, which is cool. The Essence Warden triggered twice there, hence I'm at 22. Uh, this is going to be an obnoxious amount of life. Now my opponent's Blazing Volley type cards are going to be really good against my like Essence Wardens and Flamekin Harbingers. Um, but if I can get a plus one, plus one counter or two on them, it's pretty strong. <clears throat> All right, so I think I just want to hit land drops right now and get to Coco or get to Eternal Witness. Am I just bashing in? I think so, because I have a Lightning Bolt for a Ragavan. Um, in case something goes wrong, I'm going to play this pre-combat just to like make sure I gain my life. Uh, and we're not going to use that. And we're not going to use that. I'll always yield to those. Battle. All right, we have successfully battled. All right, and no Ragavan from the opponent. I suppose I'll always yield to these. I'm definitely scared of Wasteland, but like my opponent doesn't have one because they missed their land drop last turn. So it would have to just be the card they naturally rip off the top of the deck. Okay, um, Essence Warden isn't bad. Uh, it's at the very least a little bit silly. Hello, I would like the life. 
And we're in a battle. What do you got? This is a Dire Fleet Daredevil. And I am going to eat that with a Lightning Bolt immediately. Oh, oh right, prowess is a thing. Forgot about that part. All right, nice. Uh, looks like we're going to crash in for four. Um, looking at the life total scoreboard, I, I like where I am at. But again, the Blazing Volley sorts of cards can swing this game real hard real quick. Okay, there's a Soul Land. What do you got for me? Well, whatever it is, here it comes. If it's another Direfully Daredevil, my opponent can Lightning Bolt my Harmonic Prodigy. But I will, uh, I will happily take my, uh, bajillion D life. I assume this is getting pointed at Harmonic Prodigy. Because it just makes the Essence Wardens that much more obnoxious. Okay. Oh no, they're killing an Essence Warden. Interesting. Uh, that is uh, very strange to me. Okay, maybe, maybe this will explain it. Whatever this is. Okay. When it attacks, create a treasure token. Whenever you sacrifice a treasure, it gets bigger. Word. And in comes the pirate. I think I can afford to take the hit. Uh, Alright, I'll go down to 34. So they need the mana, which is why they couldn't do that in combat. Oh, there's a blazing volley. Okay. Alright. Is this one that attacks? It is one that attacks. I'm always doing this. This will give me double eternal witness, which is sick. Question is like, do I want to get rid of the pirate that accelerates the mana, or do I want to get rid of their first striker? I think I want to get rid of this. I guess I could have done that in combat as a combat trick. Now my opponent wouldn't have blocked anyway. So like I was going to have exalt. <laughs> oh shit, these trigger twice too. This deck's great. What a what a power swing. Maybe I should have played that out in a way that allowed my opponent to, like, double... No, the other one was tapped. It couldn't have set up for a double block situation. All right. We have another captain. We have another captain. I have played the captain before in Legacy. I played exactly one Red Prison League with it. Ooh. We have another, uh... Okay, I roughly remember what this does. So when it attacks, if the defending player has more cards in hand than you, exile the top card of the library. During any turn you attack with a rogue, you may cast that card. Okay, cool. I, I love the flavor of my opponent's deck. In they come. So we both have two cards in hand this turn, so the robber doesn't get to do its thing. If I draw a land, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to eternal witness or collected company. Probably collected company. But it's close. Okay, if my opponent had that though, aren't they supposed to do that pre-combat and then they get a robber of the rich trigger? Yeah, I think so. So they don't know this, but it's much scarier for me if they actually take the uh, the ignoble hierarch there, because I I've like very clearly been missing land drops. But they have other cards in their deck that can clean this up later, so I get it. All right, green, green, one. And I think I just go ahead and return Harmonic Prodigy. I've got enough life that I can afford to take a hit or two from these creatures, like despite the fact that there is a bunch of creatures on the other side of the battlefield. And then next turn I can like play Goblin Anarchaeomancer into Harmonic Prodigy. Then hopefully the following turn Coco and just totally stabilize the board. Oh, Vile's on three and four. What the fuck is on four? Okay, so Robber of the Rich is going to trigger this time. I have one more card than my opponent. It is a Flamekin Harbinger. Okay, that's not going to do them a ton of good. Um, I probably make a trade here. This card is a little annoying. And then I'll just take six. Uh, that'll put me at 22. I'm just mostly afraid of Wasteland. And whatever the hell Aether Violent 4 represents. We're getting into the, the peripheries of the legacy card pool, where normally I kind of like know all the options that are available. This time, this time not so much. Probably someone like already writing YouTube comments, play around this, play around this, it's coming. Do you have an elemental? No elemental. It would have been really funny if they did. 
Okay. So, I think I need to set up to play Coco. Oh no, I am already playing Coco next turn if Goblin and Okeromancer is alive. Never mind. Alright, so let's make a green with this. And then I can play this. Now, next turn I have the Coco that hopefully stabilizes the board. Now, my opponent does actually have red mana because of these treasures, so they can cast Blazing Volley type cards, so that's something to be aware of. I don't know. Okay, that's that's just a Lightning Bolt. Um, but I think misstep from my opponent, that's supposed to happen on their turn, because then this creature um, has plus one, plus oh for the turn, and they can get in one more point of damage. You know, gotta gotta know the ins and out of the pirate deck if you want to pirate <laughs> pilot pirates proficiently. Oh god, we're just going to five? What the hell is this? Uh, okay. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. It gains haste and becomes a pirate. Alright, I, I respect the flavor here. I'm getting whacked for a fair amount. Okay, there's a Sacrifice Treasure. Uh, they are playing another Captain. Those are legendary. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, this is this is neat, though, because it triggers on each other pirate. Oh, that has haste, too. Just, just ow, though. Just, just ow. I go to eight. Uh, it is possible this Coco won't be good enough for me to live. Alright, so I have three mana Coco. I'm going to do it on my opponent's turn in combat. And, uh, gotta be pretty good. Not necessarily to live through the turn cycle, but so that I don't take enough damage to just kill me over two turns. I'm surprised this isn't just like snap send everybody in. Alright, there they are. And here we go. One, two, three, we Coco. Uh, this is not what I was looking to hit. I really needed a Rage Forger. So I guess I'm going to Harmonic Prodigy and Elvish Visionary. I think I'm going to do that. Like, this is a draw two. Okay. Uh, land is good. Uh, the second land is less good. Now let's figure out what blocks look like. You probably need to block here. Is it plus one, plus O? Oh? So you probably need to trade here. Here a 4-3. I can take 6 and go to 2, or I can just chump, stay out of Lightning Bolt range. I think I want to chump and stay out of Lightning Bolt range. I'll just take 3 this turn, and we'll, we'll see what I can do from here. It's going to be tight. Okay. So I think I start by playing another one of these on Shaman. I've changed my mind on how exactly I want to sequence that. Do it like this. This is a draw two. Oh, Essence Warden. Essence Warden is my shit. Alright. So I will play an Essence Warden. And then I will play an Ignoble Hierarch. Which gets me to life. Okay, now, now we're talking. Oh wait, is my opponent dead? This is five incoming damage. Two, four, five. Ooh, I might be able to go on the offensive here. Fuck okay, it, let's go. <laughs> I will put my opponent into Lightning Bolt range now. And, like, I don't mind chump blocking with my own critters. My opponent's gonna have to hold back some number of things. Huh. Well, 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 well. Oh, I suppose this line does leave me dead to a Blazing Volley, though, doesn't it? I, it it's exactly seven. If all my X1s die. Oh, no, I hope I don't die for that. I wonder if that attack was correct. I don't know, but like that card is a 4 for 1 anyway and probably just beats me anyway. Oh, I think I like the attack. Oh, they're passing the turn. Them passing the turn is so good for me. Alright. So I play a new Ignoble Hierarch. And that gets to put me up to 9 life. Now, if I attack with this creature, how big is it? 2, 4, 6. Oh god, its butt is so big. And I won't die immediately on the crackback. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, do I just attack with like an Elvish Visionary? Maybe I just attack with an Elvish Visionary. That already has like a bot of seven. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do that. 
Oh my god, this is so many shaman triggers. 7-7, seven, seven, yo. This is what the Flamekin Harbinger was uh was here for, I imagine. Yep. Goodbye. I've already made my line drop, right? Yep. Pass the turn. Ooh, still live in fear of Blazing Volley. But all I really need is a couple of creatures hitting play. And then I can probably just gain enough life to time out my opponent as well. I, I don't expect to win on the timeout angle. Like, I think one of us will die before that happens, but just throwing it out there, my opponent is really far behind on clock. Okay, that uh, that land is probably not helping. Okay, a double strike, sure. You don't have trample, right? Yeah, you don't have trample. I mean, I will 100% jump block that. No chances. Okay, this is this is not what I'm looking for here. Um, I think I will just repeat the attack of last. So my opponent attacked in. I don't know that I'm supposed to go for lethal here. If I go for lethal and I'm wrong, it's so bad for me. I'm just gonna continue to attack with one creature. Okay, there's the expected chump block on the 5-5. Five five. Right, no creatures being put in. Okay, my opponent's ancient tomb is also off now. I don't think that quite matters yet, but it's a thing. All right, so now my opponent has to hold back. Okay, that's great. Um, I think we just main phase this. Oh, the prowess trigger, of course. A harmonic prodigy and a flamekin harbinger. That sounds good. Oh my god. Okay. Well, um, yes. Yes. I'll put a rage forger on top. Uh, and then I can't stick three Rage Forgers on top because these shuffle. Um, so I'll just go no to that. And I'll go no to that. We're going to name a Shaman. And uh, let's just send in one creature. Let's just let's just send in one creature. Uh, let's, let's play out next turn. Let's see what happens next turn. Never mind trying to kill the opponent this turn. That's, that's foolhardy. Why would we do that? Any, anything could happen next turn. I'm just saying. I would like to see the plus one, plus one counters. Please don't concede opponent. Let me cast my card. Fanatical Firebrand. I respect it. It, it does gain me a fair amount of life. Oh, yes. We're going to make this one doubly uncounterable. Just in case. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the greatest legacy deck ever. Send them. Send them! <laughs> and save targets, you. Uh, always yes. Oh yeah. This is amazing. Um, okay, my round two opening hand is a little weak here, but it has the Rage Forger and two things to put counters on, and if I draw any teardrop, uh, this hand actually becomes really good. So I think I'm going to keep it, and I think I'm going to lead on Basic Forest into Essence Warden so I don't get Wastelanded. Uh, but I have four lands. Maybe I'm fine with getting Wastelanded. Yeah, I think I'm fine with getting Wastelanded. Unless it's... Uh, uh, I found this mulliganing to five. That makes me think more unfair than fair. So, and... This is super fringe, but if we are paired against Red Prison and my opponent is mulliganing towards a Blood Moon hand, I think I want to lead on Basic Forest here, because then I should be able to cast all the cards in my deck, uh, except maybe Eternal Witness through a Blood Moon. And I know that's like fringe, but like I, I need to be thinking like combo or prison most of the time when my opponent mulligans down that low. Underground C? Okay, so we're probably playing against... Nope, nope, it is not what I thought it was going to be. Um, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna be pretty aggressive. Uh, we're playing against Hogak. Shaman! So let's go one and two. Oh yeah. Start the triggers. And then I can Flamekin Harbinger. And we'll do the triggers. I will use this ability. And I think I just go, like, Rage Forger into Rage Forger and assume that that kills my opponent. Uh, no attacks into the uh, O2 Hedron crowd here. We are we are straight up racing in game one, and then hopefully we can win game one, and then we can steal one of the post sideboard games with a leyline or an aggressive hand. 
All right. Do your milling. Ooh, ooh, double bridges. Ooh, and a careful study. Uh, opponent's start is strong. There's a bloodgast, so that's that's food for bridges. Now, notably, those don't block, so we can uh we can safely make some attacks. Um, there's another bloodgast. Oh shit! That is the that is the literal one card I wanted them not to have. Seasoned pyromancer. That's a reasonable name. So now I have Hana can sack get to zombies. I do gain a lot of life, but they get to take one at my, my Rage Forger, uh, which is obviously pretty clutch. Luckily, we have another one on top of the library. So I go land, make this uncounterable, and we'll do my triggers. All right, now, do I want to trade for for or bridge from belows? I think so. I think I would be plenty happy doing that. A little weird, but I think I would be happy enough. Send those there. So let's always yes to this. Always yield. All right, there's my damage. What are you gonna do? Okay, they're just they're just gonna take it. I'm a little surprised not to see a block on the hedge and crab there to convert it into zombies. But like, if they have another fetch land, it's probably totally fine to not do that. Give me life. Give me life. Ooh, a Vengevine and a Gravecrawler. All right, things are getting interesting. Uh, not that they weren't already. Oh, no. Uh, I might combo die this turn. Like, it's very possible. Like, my opponent just needs to find a Hogak. The good news is that I am not likely to just immediately die to combat damage, or even die to combat damage in the short term. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's a Hogak. I am going to assume that with two Bridge from Belows and this many zombies in play, plus a Vengevine, that I am deterministically dead. I don't know the math well enough. Um, but I think I am dead. And at some point my opponent is just going to point those at me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just deterministic dead for me. Yeah, with a third bridge from below, that's just like Hogak coming black back plus like Yeah, I think I think this is it. So I think as soon as the first one of these targets me, I just concede. But I get to see more of my opponent's deck here by just waiting a second. See if they have anything spicy. Oh, okay, they started doing it at me. Alright, in that case I will concede. They 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 know the math. <clears throat> Whereas I don't. All right. Uh, we really wanted to win game one, but so it goes. Uh, I think Burning Tree Emissary is probably the most cuttable of the things here. So that's my subs for the ley lines, and now it's the question of like, do I want a Reclamation Sage? I probably want one in here. Like I, I think just making it so that I have access to that effect if a game goes very long is probably a good idea. I don't know that I want more than this. It's like it's it's very 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 specifically for one card. Okay, so this opening hand is both slow and doesn't have a ley line. How is this opening hand? So I would throw back the flame can harbinger with this hand. And I would play harmonic prodigy on turn two, turn three rex age, which may or may not do anything, and turn four coco. I think I can do better. Oh god. All right. Do I keep the four card hand or do I start going for Leyline? I don't, I don't think this hand wins the game most of the time. This hand I think has a real chance. I'm going to keep this. So I get four of these. Probably these four, although Essence Warden is also intriguing. The issue with the Coco is that I don't have the hard green mana to cast it. So maybe that means it's not Gar Goblin and Archaeomancer and instead it's Ignoble Hierarch. All right. Uh, this is this is not what I am looking to do. That's okay. Um, but, like, I have a real chance back in this game with Coco. Um, this is not as good as some of the other hands that I threw back, but, you know, hopefully we get somewhere. All right, I mean, that just does mean I get to cast it next turn. All right, do your thing. 
see how bad it is. Uh, bridge from below and gray crawler. Oh, no land? Oh, no land is great for me. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think I just main phase this. We hit one thing off of Coco. That's, uh, that's a little disappointing. I mean, thankfully we drew a second one. Um, but that's, that's rough. Okay. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Like, if my opponent still doesn't have land, like, I am, I am just good to go. All right. All right. Come on, Coco. I need you to do the thing. Uh, yeah, that, that counts. That's fine. Essence Warden and Flamekin Harbinger. Put these on the stack. I will use this ability, yes. It will get Rage Forger. I'll not use that ability, and then I'll always yield to these. I am not sure if I am supposed to attack in. Um, but I guess I'm killing my opponent via damage. I don't know, maybe I try to just do an attack with Rage Forger next turn and not fuel their graveyard this turn. Like it's only it's only four damage. Yeah, let's let's wait a turn. <clears throat> like opponents kind of stuck, and if I can keep them stuck, that's good for me. Um, things can definitely get weird now, though. Now, there's another bridge. There's a vent vine. God, if they have Hogak, their turn is so good. Fuck. Alright, there's the Hogak, which returns the Vengevine, and it gets to leave their three best cards in Graveyard. Uh, that is... that is scary. So I can go ahead and do this, because then that makes this cost two mana. Alright. I get two sets of plus one, plus one counters. Alright, so if I attack with these two creatures, I do a little bit of direct damage, and then I just take so much on the splashback. I, I think I hold back and try to go for a lethal attack in one turn. I'm at 32 life. I think I try to wait for another Coco or a Rage Forger and make more profitable attacks, like with the bridges there. Like my opponent's attacks are just good. All right, what do you got, Stitcher Supplier? Some lands. Good with me. Are you attacking? No, you are not attacking. I will hold this land. Uh, just quick attacks. So I can attack and deal eight direct damage, and then my opponent's blocks are pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait this out. I don't love waiting it out versus Hogak. It's like my opponent has a combo kill. That's fine. My opponent can cast the grave crawl. Oh fuck. All right. Uh, well, am I already dead? I assume I'm already dead. Just, I just don't know the Hogak math well enough to know. I'm just going to ask my opponent. All right. They, they say I think so. Uh, I'm going to take their word for it and uh, just concede. We're going to keep the, the league roll in here. GG's. Um, we, we mold to four this time and uh, got a little unlucky with the first uh, Coco hit. But that's okay. Like, we were not very far away from turning this around. Although... Uh, we needed a little... Okay, this this probably would have been the turn where we could have killed. Uh, yeah, that that would have been a lot of Rage Forger triggers. GG's. Okay, my opponent has a mulligan to 5 here, which makes me think combo. So, we're going to lead on ye old Shaman land. And I'm going to put a Shaman into play, but I'm not actually going to search with this because I think I want to draw another land with this current situation. Like, I just want more land so that I can have... what Fairy Conclave. Okay. Stasis? Question? Or no, not stasis. Uh, standstill? Question mark? Unsure. Um, so this needs to get green. I think I'm going to go with non-basics. If I get wastelanded once, it's already just real bad. Right. Not a, not a shaman. Alright, send it in. Alright, island. Are you going to stand still? Paradigm shift. Oh. My opponent just exiled their entire library. Can you, like, Thassa's Oracle me at instant speed? Or is that just, like, your way of conceding? Like, you... So, Thassa's Oracle 
Yeah, I don't see anything that lets them do this at instant speed. They've just uh, basically shown me their deck. I mean, cool. I'm good with that. So I will, I will make a bunch of mana. I will cast an Elvish Visionary. Drawing two cards. Oh yeah. Um, I guess that can get me a new Harmonic Prodigy, which gets me a Flamekin Harbinger. And I will get a Rage Forger. I'll say no to those other two. And then I'll send in with everyone. Okay. You have some Trixies. You do not have some Trixies. That was your fancy way of conceding and showing me your deck. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, Thorn is kind of interesting. I, I'm essentially just looking to kill my opponent as quickly as possible. So that they can't, like, paradigm shift and do the thing. But I think it's okay to take a few cards out of my deck to do this. So if I'm putting in thorns, my collected companies become worse. So how many of them do I cut? All of them? Maybe cut all of them on the draw? Just try to turn cards sideways? They're so good, though. I see Eternal Witness being very slow in this matchup. Let's cut... Got two cocos. I'm not. I'm not always gonna have the thorns. On the play, I think I'll play all the cocos, despite thorn. Okay. So turn one. Flamekin Harbinger, fetch me my idiot. Turn two, Burning Tree emissary and Elvish Visionary. Turn three, Rage Forger. I think this hand is fine. I don't know, like at what speed my opponent is going to go most games. Um, I do know that I will in my deck, given the opportunity, given the strategy that they are on. They also might have a sideboard juke, I don't know. Rage Forger. Alright, Vile ticks up. We'll see if my opponent uh, has anything cool. <clears throat> okay, so. Burning Tree Emissary. Yes. Into Elvish Visionary. Yes. To attack for a mighty one damage. Um, it is now possible to die this turn to um, Thassa's Oracle off file plus Paradigm Shift. Uh, if we do die, we get to see my opponent's post sideboard configuration, which is cool. And if we don't die, I am going to try to hurt my opponent a lot. Ooh, looks like not dead. I like not dead. Okay, do I actually goldfish faster if I just play three spells this turn? Probably. It's just more triggers next turn. It means that I miss out on a considerable amount of damage in the short term, but it's like much better in the long term. It's not like you putting counters on three more creatures that all get to attack. Yeah, I think I've talked myself into that. Okay. Tap. You can tap down my 2-2 two, two, so it doesn't attack this turn. That's fine. Okay. Get more of those. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all fine. Yep. So I will I will just play out critters. And then next turn I can rage forger and uh go ham. I am not at all worried about dying to my opponent's aggressive elements. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Like I will probably just take eight directly here. Um, there is a world where I want to triple block the Merfolk Lord, um, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I just clock my opponent harder back. Here. Oh. There's more. Now well, there's a reason to not, uh, not block. Alright, I like this. Come on. Let's Rage Forger. I will I will put some plus one plus one counters on stuff. Okay. Um math. One, two, three, four, five. So my opponent's at fourteen effectively. They block my two largest. They take two, four, five, six, going down to eight. So I don't just want to go all in here. Um I will want to attack with at least one creature. Probably a two two. Probably something like the Elvish Visionary. Attack with that. It attacks as a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Alright, so choose you. Always yes. 
Save targets. Always yield. Yes. All right, opponent goes to 14. Okay. Athos is Oracle. Uh, sure, I guess I guess the scrying can be pretty good here. The double creatures off either vial last turn was something that I was not necessarily anticipating. Makes things a little harder this turn. Okay. How are we doing this? So, assuming no Trixies, this trades with this. And then that turns all the rest of these into 3-3s. Three so if I were to say... Actually, this can trade with this once they shrink. And this is currently 12 incoming damage, which is probably too much. I, I kind of have to play like they don't have another lord. If they have like a 3-mana lord like Mero Regiri or something. Um, I think I'm going to more or less just die. So then... If I put two power in front of anything else, these will also die to the cascading effects. Let's try this and hope things work. Okay, that that wasn't so bad. All right, so I'm at five. Back with two creatures. Leave one back so I don't just die, but keep the pressure up. Probably. There's some things that like my opponent could violin that I'm ju just not going to beat. So, for example, if they have a true name nemesis, that's just going to kill me in two turns no matter what. Oh, right, this one doesn't have a plus one plus one counter on it. Shit. It doesn't count itself. Yeah, okay. I will concede to that. Uh, wait. Raid here, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm dead. I got out of control quickly. Okay. I want these. And, I don't know, like, if, if my opponent is going to play a more traditional Merfolk game, I don't actually want these. I want these instead. Um, maybe I'll go Burning Trees out for these in. Pretty awkward. This this hand is okay versus fair Merfolk stuff and bad against unfair Merfolk stuff. I am going to keep it. Coco is a hell of a drug. Um, note that I have intentionally not boarded in uh, the Rex Ages. That, that was a choice. That was not me forgetting that the card exists and that Aether Vial is a card. Alright, um, let's grab a Mountain. We'll play Goblin and Archaeomancer, which makes Elvish Visionary cost one less. Or not. Uh, that's fine. Uh, there's a standstill. Uh, so I'll crash in for one. I don't know that Goblin and Archaeomancer is really worth a counterspell. Um, but I guess my opponent just wants to fire it off before I find a Cavern of Souls, so, like, I get it. Okay, sure. Um, let's continue to be wasteland-proof. Bunch of forest here. I don't think I have a reason to fire this off now. What's the mana cost on that new Suspend spell? I, uh, I believe it is literally just called Suspend. Is it one? Okay, that, that exiles creatures, not spells. I don't remember exact wording. Um, in that case, I guess I'll just fire this off now before my opponent. Um, no. I wait. I wait. So I'm going to let them tick up the vial. And then in upkeep, I'm going to Coco. This means that like, I play around Curse Catcher type effects. Uh, that's not the biggest set of hits. Oh, and it sends two collected co companies to the bottom, um, which I don't love. Uh, but that is what it is. I'm gonna need a little, little help from the top of the deck. Um, how do I feel about that? You can have your cards. I have decided how I felt. All right, so let's get another mountain. Let's play the Harmonic Prodigy. You get your three cards immediately. Okay, nice. Always yield to those. I'll go back to 20. And now I will play my draw two card. You got a draw three card, I got a draw two card. Mine also comes with a body though and a couple of life. Always yield to these. Oh, nice, a new Essence Warden. Play that out. Give a Trickster. Oh, just a Lord of Atlantis and you're. Just dodging the life. Sure, that's fine. Um, so this is a reasonable attack in. As I get two different uh, 
ignoble hierarch exalted triggers because of harmonic prodigy. Okay. Um, I feel like the way I lose this game is to a combo finish. Um, I, I'm just like so very on board and I still have gas in the tank. Um, but like paradigm shift Thassa's Oracle is still definitely a thing. Okay, yep, yeah, that's that's okay. I will take my four life. Yep, that's also fine. Now this will just be a waiting game until I can make profitable attacks. Um, this is probably going to be worth playing now. I'll still be able to Coco if I draw one off of Elvish Visionary. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the triggers. Oh, the triggers. Alright, so play a Harmonic Prodigy for one. Gain some life. Gain some more life. Uh, okay, so I can I can attack in for show if we want, uh, but I don't really think I need to do that. Now we're just looking to draw a Rage Forger and kill my opponent in one attack. Okay, Master of the Pearl Trident is fine. Yeah, so I have three, six, nine, ten creatures. Um, well, okay, I guess I have eight shamans, but uh, Rage Forger should just kill my opponent. All right, yep. Do your thing. And you combo me. Okay, just pass on the turn. Oh, there we go. All right, uh, do you have a counter spell? Okay, so the Rage Forger things trigger three times. Uh, let's always yield to those. And I feel pretty confident that uh, I can just attack all here and it'll uh, work out well for me. Thanks. All right, so let's save targets. Target you. And there they go. Oh, I need to hit always yes. Yes. I have done it again. GG's. This deck is really fun. All right, uh, opening hand here is pretty strong. I get to lead on a couple of basics and go for an early collected company. All right, forest, ignoble hierarch, pass. Uh, and you know, come to think of it, we're gonna look kind of like a like a red green food chain, like goblin food chain list in a lot of matches. Um, that wasn't something that had like occurred to me immediately, but uh, it's definitely true. Okay, so. I guess I'm going to play my creature pre-combat. Um, like, Daze is a card that exists in this format. It's not super common for Prismatic Vista to lead into Daze, but, you know, you gotta be cognizant of it. Oh, we are getting a Force of Will. Pitching A back to basics, yeah. I, uh, I played around that sort of effect this game. Get in there, little buddy. Best, best goblin question mark feels like it in my heart right now because <laughs> it's enabling these shenanigans um so we're probably playing against like blue white miracles or bant okay yeah that's fine that's gonna keep uh, me off collected company for a turn um, which is actually uh, quite relevant give my opponent more time to find a counter spell uh, Essence Warden, not exactly the standalone threat that I am looking for. I think I attack Essence Warden into two open mana. Like there's Ice Fang Quaddle to think about, but I th think my individual points of damage are probably going to matter a lot this game. Okay, now I don't need to think about that. <sighs> the next thing I'll need to be thinking about is whether or not I just like slam Coco main phase. There's Terminus and Force of Negation to think about, but there's also like Rage Forger, Forger counters and damage to think about. Huh. That's good. That's real good. I think I'm just going to attack for one. And then Coco on my opponent's end step. And then like hope that Coco into Rage Forger kills my opponent. That, that's the dream here. Um, it may be that I open myself up to, like, actual factual counterspell by waiting a turn cycle. Or, like, hard cast Force of Negation rather than pitch um, cast Force of Negation. There's there's a lot of factors. All right, Coco. Do your thing. Another thing in favor of Sorcery Speed Coco is uh, Ignoble Hierarch Exalted Damage. Um, oh. 
And we're a little, little tapping and untapping. Okay, we are getting force pitching to vary. I'm a little sad about that. Uh, that's not bad. Common. So we're going to play this. I get some triggers. And I get some triggers. Let's, let's make some white mana for that. Okay, it has resolved. I will be sending the Essence Warden in. All right, Rage Forger, target you. So let's save targets. Always yes, always yield. All right, the opponent goes to 14 and then presumably to 12. I'm kind of out of gas here, though. I think if my opponent can do something cool like Brainstorm into Terminus, it's so bad for me. Oh, just uh, not willing to trade this turn cycle. That's a little surprising to me. Or like, they could have cast this earlier to look for Swords to Plowshares to plow this and make it so that they take less damage. There are other lines available to them. Okay, that was a quick shuffle. All right, into Island. And what do you have? All right, it's a prismatic ending for my Rage Forger, uh, which leaves me pretty far behind. Like, I'll have a 2-2 in play, but that's kind of whatever. I'm I'm just going to continue to press for damage. I am trying to, you know, limp over the finish line in terms of killing my opponent before they find something like a Jace or a Terminus or an Uro uh, that just buries me. Uh, even an Endurance is kind of spooky, just the 3-4 butt. All right. Uh, this is an expected trade. All right. Um, I will I will live in fear of the Terminus that could come next turn. Some of the Bant decks have it, and some of them don't. All right. I do not believe it makes sense to play this card. So now I get to play the really awkward game of, like, do I play around Endurance? Playing around Endurance means no attacks this turn, and that's real bad for me. I'm not going to play around Endurance. If I lose a creature to it, I lose a creature to it. Um, but I think I need to try to push the damage. Yeah, they have it. Yep, but I, I can't play around, like, Terminus and Endurance simultaneously. That just doesn't work. I'm totally fine with another Collected Company being put back into my deck, though. All right. I hit my opponent for one. I will play this out. Still gets me a life. Um, Sylvan Library, just as a source of stability for my opponent, is terrifying. And uh, I'm going to be kind of in the mode of like where I play the card that I draw each turn for a while. Um, and I'm secretly trying to will a uh, Rage Forger or uh, a Coco to the top of my deck. And I don't think I have a lot of time to do so. Unsurprisingly, my opponent is not taking extra cards with Sylvan Library. I think their Sylvan Library was a little weak there, because they just, uh, like, did not take any life there. And they also just, like, grabbed a fetch land, so that means that they want to shuffle those cards away 100% of the time. There are just some, like, horrifying draws here. So your your Uros, your Jace, Teferi. Well, Teferi a little bit less so, but it's still obnoxious. Which would mean that I could only Sorcery Speed Coco. Alright. I assume my opponent's just going to pass the turn here. Yep. I'm going to leave my Wooded Foothills around. Nice. All right, so I'll play this. All right, it looks like this is getting a hard cast force of will. That's fine. I like it when, like, my one drop is scary enough for that to happen. So I'm keeping the wooded foothills around in case I need to play around, like, a Jace Fate Seal. Um, or if my opponent plays back to basics, I can get another mountain. Um, actually, maybe this isn't true. Maybe it's so important for me that I draw a Coco. But I want to shuffle that Coco back into the deck. I could I could buy that. Yeah, especially now. Now I probably just need to fetch that mountain out. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This shuffles the Coco that was put back into my deck by my opponent's endurance a few turns ago. Okay, that's a great draw. See what it finds me. Oh, that's also a great draw. Make some white mana, shall we? Nice. All right. 
So if I send in these creatures, that puts my opponent to six, and we'll put them down near dead. Uh, less so because of the Uro. Am I willing to throw away an Essence Warden to make that attack, or do I just attack next turn? Um, next turn I can get more damage, and I can throw away one more body because my opponent will have Uro. Sort of interesting. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take that damage. All right. Always yes. All right. So those drain my opponent to six. I guess if my opponent has an Ice Fang Coatl, that attacks kind of bad. So my opponent has plenty of food to escape this, and they can go up to six life. I take three of that on the attack. They block my two largest creatures, and then they take three and die. In in theory. If they can Uro plus do something else, that's not actually true. Okay. Now, now they would live through the attack. Because they stop my Rage Forger triggers. Because I don't have Rage Forger. Yeah, so we, we have done 20 points of damage to my opponent. They're only alive because of the first Uro trigger. I think we're going to come up just short here. Uh, we're not really good at answering Uro, just in terms of my entire deck. Like we have red removal like lightning bolts. I guess the plan for Uro is just like go wide. It could also technically ley line for Uro, but I don't know how much sense that makes. Oh no, do you have another source of flash shares? Or prismatic ending? Oh, that's so good. Aiga is not gonna do it. Okay, I think I'm probably at the point where I've lost this one, but I'm at 34 life, so like I'm fighting. Also, this is game one, and my opponent is at 14 minutes on clock. Uh, it's pretty likely that I can win this match on timeout if we go to three games. Hmm. I wonder if I'm supposed to board Leyline because, like, my opponent doesn't have that many win conditions that can just, like, win through the amount of life that I can gain in this deck. That's actually a really interesting question. Huh. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the damage here. So that's fine. Uh, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll play some cards. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop bluffing, uh, Coco. Just gonna grind my clock advantage. Ooh, opponent has a volcanic island, uh, which I presume is specifically for a fourth color for prismatic ending. I'm going to record with a Boros deck shortly that has prismatic ending in it. And I was considering playing, like, one Volcanic Island for exactly that same reason. Alright. In comes the Uro. Ooh, and the Endurance. Oh, not the Endurance. I'm gonna say, that's, that's brave. I can, I can do a lot of damage if I get a Rage Forger into play. Alright, I go to 22. I'm just gonna play out my creatures every turn. Feeling, uh, less and less like I have to play around Terminus. Yep. Give me that life. Keep me alive. Although I guess the Ice Fang Coatl is going to offset the uh, the life it gains every turn cycle. Alright, looks like we have two different creatures coming in now. Um, I want to block a bunch of creatures on Endurance, maybe. I don't really want to lose the Essence Warden, but... I think I'm just going to throw everything in front of this Endurance and go from there. Just like taking that out of play is so much life gained over time. Like my opponent can take a Burning Tree and an Essence Warden out. I'm good with that. Okay, they have chosen the Elvish Visionary, which is actually smart because I think that one has a plus one plus one counter on it. So that is the, uh, the correct line. That difference is very relevant. Uh, Tradesies? I think Tradesies. Is a lightning bolt worth of damage or a trade for an ice fang coatl, unless my opponent has another endurance. Damn it! Oh, they have targeted themselves, put all their fancy removal spells back in their deck. I don't really mind attacking with a burning tree emissary there, though. Like, if they have the endurance, I have the endurance, but the 2 2 isn't really doing me much right now, anyway. Alright, 10 incoming damage. That's fine. Okay, there is a Jace the Mind Sculptor. So they're gonna fate seal me, and I have unf sixed, so I can uh, go ahead and shuffle, grab a taiga, play a duder, and then I'll just pass the turn. Okay, 
they have deterministic lethal, they may uh, bounce my idiot with Jace and then kill me that way. Or they can do that. That's all fine. I, I have accumulated such a massive clock advantage here. Alright. I will die. Okay, so for sideboarding... Yeah, I honestly think it's a perfectly viable strategy to just plan on dragging on the game as long as I possibly can. And, like, board in both ley lines and thorns to do so. I don't hate it, but the ley lines are very bad if they're not in my opening hand. I have no possibility of cat. Well, I guess I can double ignoble hierarch technically to cast them. All right. Um, let's, let's do operation, uh, drag this game to a standstill. I think the burning three emissaries are an easy cut. Then is it just like flamekin harbinger? Like the tutoring is nice. But I'm not actually looking to kill my opponent. I'm just looking to drag the game on, and Flamekin Harbinger doesn't drag the game on. It's a little weird, but I could buy that. So this still leaves me with 26 creatures, which I think is okay for Collected Company. It's not, it's not nearly as good as my, my game one percentage, but I think it will be good enough. Let's submit this. Okay, this is just an opening hand that can trips a bunch of times. I think that's fine. Land go. Okay, you have a land, you have a ponder. I'm probably just gonna fetch a forest and thin out my deck by one here. Okay, uh, this is fantastic. Um, so let's go you and you. And then that can set me up for a very strong turn next turn. All right. Maybe a Prismatic Vista, or not Prismatic Vista, Prismatic Ending on my creature. Nope, Source to Plowshares. Oh, this is insane. Shaman. So, uh, let's go green, red. We'll leave open green, and that way I can hit an Ignoble Hierarch and play it. Oh, nope, that's a, that's a Ley Line of the Void. Okay. What do you have? You have an Uro. That's pretty good, and it's... Pretty early in the game as well, uh, which is the sort of thing they need to close out the game. Thank you, Leyline. Very cool. All right. Let's play one of these. All right. Draw my card. Oh, Thorn. I love Thorn here. Uh, it's not as early as I would like it, but it's still quite good. Um, I think I am going to go ahead and grab Forest here. Again, just in respect of back to basics. Okay, force of negation. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but planes does not work towards casting a row. Um, that does. That's unfortunate. Okay, there is a tundra. So my opponent does have the blue, blue, green, green for a row. Um, so I guess the hope is that I can force them into not attacking. I can't really take that card out of play. Uh, that's nuts. Alright, I'll play this. It is counterable, because it is not a shaman. Alright, cool. This, however, is a shaman. This will just get me... Okay, it's a swords. That's fine. I'll chill here. So I technically could set up like a triple block situation against this row. Um, but I think that's just like walking fully into a blowout, um, so I'm not going to do that. No blocks. Okay, so now it becomes a question of like, am I going to attack into Endurance? I do not think I am. I think it's just like so, so detrimental for me to walk into Endurance here uh, that I just like can't do it. I'm gonna pass the turn. And this is what's like just terrifying about these blue decks right now is like, they get a huge advantage if if you play Scared of Endurance because you know it's good against you. So even when they don't have it, Endurance is still good against you. It is frustrating. Alright, I want to get to land. I take six more. Alright, let's see what we can make of this turn. You're uncounterable. Uh, not the land I'm looking for. I still don't think I can attack. Like, if my opponent has Endurance, do they even play it? Like, if I'm playing around it, they probably don't, right? 
because then it incentivizes me to attack the next turn and like lose out. All right, so I think this is where I start chump blocking Uro. I think the clock is my primary angle of winning now. That's good. Let's name human with that, and I'm not going to play this yet. Okay, there's a nice fang. That means I can take some damage on the ground, even if I start chump blocking the Uro every turn. I've already used a handful of Elvish Visionaries, though, so, like, one of the easiest ways for me to gas up is just, like, Harmonic Prodigy plus Elvish Visionary, and I can't actually just do that. All right, I will jump. Okay, that's very good. All right, so you are uncounterable. And now, let's go to my opponent's upkeep, maybe. This is actually a pretty good time. Just, like, do it in response to that brainstorm so they can't look for a counter spell if they don't have one already. Do it here. Containment Priest. What a tilt. Um, I guess I take these cards out of my deck. The Essence Warden there would have uh, been nice in terms of life gain. Um, but I think short of ripping another Coco. Uh, now, like, the Containment Priest is in play. Co Coco is just not good enough. Yeah, I think our opponent is just going to win this game in like two minutes because they got just turn four Uro. They love e. the curse of the ley line, right? Board in the ley line because it's theoretically important in the matchup. Keep a reasonable hand, draw three fucking ley lines anyway. All right, GG's. Sometimes people ask me, Phil, what's it like to be a YouTuber? And I respond, well, it kind of turns your brain to mush. Because, like, I've had this head these headphones on all league, and, like, my magic online is muted, so why have I been wearing headphones? Anyway, we're keeping this hand. Um, we've got a hand that goes Burning Tree Emissary into Elvish Visionary on turn two, and then plays a Rage Forger. Uh, yeah, that's, that's okay. Um, I just want to fetch... A mountain and play around like Avon Mind Sensor effects forever. I think so. Notice just how uh, incredibly cognizant I am of the things like Stifle, Avon Mind Sensor, Days that just like muck with your mana in weird ways. Like when you can, when you can play around that stuff, just just do so if you can. You, you can't always, especially with Days. Sometimes like you just gotta jam. Not every deck has, like, the patience of blue-white control and just has the ability to, uh, you know, just play around those effects forever. All right. Forest. Burning Tree Emissary. Into Elvish Visionary number one. Oh, she gets a new Burning Tree Emissary. I don't mind that at all. But unless my opponent gets something, like, big and spooky, like a knight into play, I might be able to just kind of, like, slow roll my cards a little bit and then just build a board that kills my opponent in a single attack. Um, the Maverick decks have started, uh, and this feels like a trap to me, I'm not going to take this. The Maverick decks have started to play Prismatic Ending, so, like, that's something that I'm going to have to keep in mind. All right, what do you have? That's a knight. Okay, I mean, that's, that's big. Is this a Rage Forger turn? I don't think this is a Rage Forger turn. I think I'm gonna like Burning Tree Emissary and Elvish Visionary and then play Forest and then like play Coco the following turn, Rage Forger that following turn, and then hope to kill my opponent on said turn. All right, so I take my mana rebate, play Elvish Visionary. That's a Taiga, the Forest, don't have good attacks. I'll just pass. What do you have? Fuck me. God damn it. God damn it. That's so good. Okay, the good news is that I'll probably show my opponent Collected Company. I, I probably won't show my opponent Collected Company, and then Gaddock T will get boarded out. Um, but that's a bit of a beating. Okay. It's fine. So now, now the long game begins. Um, notably, if my opponent has... A, uh, a Dark Depths package in their Maverick deck, things get a little spooky because, like, I can just be put under a lot of aerial pressure that otherwise I wouldn't need to worry about. I think we're going to stare at each other for a while. All right. 
Operation Grow the Team begins. My opponent's pausing here, which makes me think they have swords to plowshares. Nope. Well, I mean, they still could have it. If they let me go to combat, they don't have it. Yeah. Um, we'll just chill. I think I just want to drag on this game. Alright, so the knight is activating. Okay, it is just windswept heath. That's fantastic. If my opponent had the Dark Depths package, I think they would be going for that immediately. But my opponent is just going to make a big big. I don't care about a big big. I don't anything about post-sideboard games already. Um, Plague Engineer is something that I'm going to need to have on my radar for the post-sideboard games. Alright, what do you have for your three mana? Not a green sun. Oh god, like attack your Gaddock Teague into one of my critters and let me let me kill it. It'll be fine, I swear. Okay, we're just going to stare at each other for a while. Um, I think I continue to play Outlands. It's weird because, you know, night. Alright. This, this staring contest is definitely a thing. Alright, Knight is going to continue to just cycle lands, it looks like. Now, my opponent can do, like, double Mother of Runes protection line to force the Knight through my entire board. I only have two colors worth of creatures. Okay, sure, sure, sure. That said, I don't exactly know how deep my opponent can go in terms of, like, double protecting when I, like, have this Rage Forger that is pretty threatening. Oh, this, the scavenging ooze makes this card pretty awkward, huh? I think I saved this card for later. I don't know, maybe maybe it's just like never really good because of the ooze. I don't know, my mana's... my opponent's mana is kind of tight. There may be a time where I can get value out of this Eternal Witness. Um, but at the same time, like maybe I'm losing out on a potential attack later for like not playing this witness out and then like I don't know. It's weird. Like the eternal witness is also just worth some life immediately. Maybe it's worth more life later. I, I don't know. Okay, that's that's spooky. At, at what point are you comfortable attacking? Not yet. I am happy to hear that. Alright. Uh, let's, let's just like maybe do this oh yeah we love triggers around here I'm gonna go ahead and just e-witness back a land or attempt to not the card I want to e-witness back but I just think I'm so unlikely to actually e-witness back the things that I want to get back oh shit my opponent forgot about their scavenging is sick that means I can get another basic land that can never be eaten by night of the reliquary yeah, I think my current plan is, like, draw another Rage Forger and kill my opponent in one attack, question mark. So if all... are you a Shaman too? You are a Shaman too. Yeah, that's just, like, so much, so much damage if I get to attack with a second Rage Forger. A accordingly, I kind of think my opponent needs to put the pedal to the metal and, like, actually work on killing me. Okay, that's good. That, may that makes a lethal attacks in one turn slightly harder. Okay, so pro green here gets through all of my creatures now. All right. Okay. So I am pretty likely to just die next turn to that same thing. So that means I probably need to go for a win this turn. So I should take the marginal thinning here. All right. That is a no bueno. I believe I am dead. That sort of plowshares was very good. Although honestly, I think my opponent could have been aggressive earlier and put me into a bad situation. So this just finds a fetch land, the fetch land goes to the graveyard, or a wasteland, and then my opponent has lethal. Oh! I mean, this this probably works and gets me dead too, right? Like, now it's just two knight attacks instead of one knight attack. Or the other knight activates on this turn. Okay, so... Here. Oh, right, the exalted. The exalted does it as well. Okay. GG's. Couldn't, couldn't quite close it out. The Gaddock Teague ruined me. Um, but like, now my opponent probably won't have Gaddock Teague in their deck for this game. Um, we'll probably just play four Lightning Bolts and call it good. I think I just sideboard out the Burning Tree Emissaries, kind of like I've been doing every round. They're cool, but they're not critical to what the deck is doing. It, like, it's the Rage Forgers and the Harmonic Prodigies that let me do what I am doing. 
Um, there's maybe other matchups, like maybe against some combo decks, we keep them in because they are just like something that I can play Burning Tree Emissary into a Thorn and like get a creature and a taxation effect in the same turn cycle. How do I feel about this? So land Ignoble Hierarch into a lot of situations that are just bad if my opponent has Wastelands or Plows. I'm going to mulligan this. This hand is fine. I'll probably pitch one land here and keep the rest of this. Actually, maybe I just pitch the Eternal Witness and then I'm better against Wastelands in the mid-game. I have turns 1, 2, and 3 covered already. I don't know. I probably draw another land at some point this game. But no, let's, let's throw back the Cavern. I don't have to worry about uh, counters here. Let's get Basics to start off the game. So this will just be a Mountain. And then we'll Harbinger. And... This will get us the Rage Forger. All right, library. Like you gotta, you gotta not be under the stack. This is this is annoying. You go over here, get you, pass. All right. Any turn one play? No turn one play. Oh, going in the second main phase. Flame Flamekin Harbinger has suddenly become threatening. That's a prismatic ending. Yep, that's that's fine with me. So we'll grab a forest and play around wasteland. And play the Visionary. Okay. The Eternal Witness is a little worse against white removal than other things. We'll see. Maybe we can uh, do nutty things later. Uh, I'll continue to play around Wasteland. Yep, I'm good with uh, that operation. So, do I Rage Forger now? It is the most efficient use of my mana and resources in many ways. I'm going to go ahead and play it out and crash in, just to make my opponent's Sylvan Library a little bit worse. Save targets, always yes, always yield. And then, like, maybe we can trade the Rage Forger in combat at some point and bring it back. Or if my opponent spends, you know, two mana on a Prismatic Ending to answer that, like, I still get to crash in for three damage next turn, rebuy a fetch land. Okay. That is not the end of the world for me. That's very good for them. Not the end of the world. Um, although it does mean that the rest of my hand is junk. Now I can't attack in with the Exalted Trigger. That's, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, so even though that didn't kill any creatures, that invalidated two cards in my hand um, and stalls me out. That's unfortunate. It also means that a lot of my potential top decks are just bad. Um, hopefully I find a Lightning Bolt to answer that. Got four of those. Um, hmm. Yeah, how how bad is this? So it's the Harbingers, the Harbingers and the Essence Wardens and the Ignoble Hierarchs and the Visionaries and the Witnesses. Yeah, it's it's bad. All right, their Dryad Arbor is acceptable. Oh, that is that is fucking not acceptable though. Oh god, that just gets Cauldra, and it will eat me alive. So Jitte will also eat me alive in a slightly different way. All right, kind of gotta, kind of gotta get lucky here in terms of hits. This is a big opportunity though. All right, we'll take Harmonic Prodigy and Eternal Witness. Okay, so the Eternal Witness. Well, oh god, it can get back itself? Holy shit. So one of those gets back Eternal Witness, and one of those gets back Coco? That is fucking hilarious. What a cool interaction. Alright, so I can play a land. Uh, and then I basically have to pass the turn, because playing this doesn't do anything. Um, but I can Coco forever. That's That's a thing. Yeah, if I, if I, like, draw a Lightning Bolt, and I can Lightning Bolt the Plague Engineer and then Coco, well, hmm. There's still the Jitte. The, the Jitte is still bad news bears. No, oh, opponent is, is taking some damage. Oh god, that guy's Cradle is so fucking good. That essentially means I can go Jitte and equip for two mana. Or, sorry, for two lands, rather. Okay. A Visionary got swords. So goodbye Rage Forger triggers in the short term. And then this is going to be Jete. 
Oh god, prismatic ending. Oh, they still get to just get to equip on top of all of this. Fuck. What a turn. Yeah. Oh, that is just goodbye to my whole board. I uh, will take three. And then for the low, low price of one Jitte counter, my opponent can try to end my whole career. I'm going to cast the Coco now. Specifically because I can potentially buy it back in this same turn cycle in one very magical Christmas land scenario. Yep, that was that was expected. Okay, this is the scenario where I get to buy it back, by the way, is where I hit a Goblin Anarchaeomancer. The Rage Forger does not really do anything here. Well, that's not exactly true. Hmm. The, the rest of this turn cycle got kind of weird. The Rage Forger makes me better against Jitte. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to take Anarchaeomancer Rage Forger rather than the Harmonic Prodigy, but Harmonic Prodigy, like Eternal Witness, is super cool too. Um, I'm going to take these two though. All right. Oh shit, there's a window. Oh god, because this is a 1-1 one -one due to uh, the Plague Engineer, that math doesn't work out like I want it to. And then I also don't get my opportunity to Eternal Witness for cheap. Fuck! Alright. I think I... Well, no. I'll, I'll give it one more turn cycle. Uh, but, like, fuck, the Plague Engineer is so good. Not that the Jitte isn't, but... I thought I had the opportunity to play around the one Jitte counter, but I forgot about the Plague Engineer. Yeah, so I guess it's like the Harmonic Prodigy and the Goblin Anarchaeomancer there, so that I do get the opportunity to Eternal Witness and rebuy immediately. Because um, I don't put a trigger on the stack that allows them to remove that instantly. Um, but I am, I am on the back foot here. Shit. <laughs> Double shit. Oh my god. Alright, yeah. Uh, I think unless... Uh, something crazy happens, I just concede here. Yep, alright. GG's opponent. Alright, uh, so we went 2-3 in this league. Overall thoughts on the deck list? Fucking fantastic. I love it. Um, this deck is a lot of fun. Um, I maybe missed some shamans. I, I tried to go through everything in the Gatherer, and I, I looked at literally all of the shamans. Um, there was Fanatic of Mogus at 4 mana, um, which does damage equal to Devotion of Red. A devotion to red which was kind of interesting but i thought it was a little bit too expensive like i i want to have coco just because like the raw power level that it offers um and like the the tutor ability that it has on it well not tutor but you, you know what i mean i wanted that effect but i think like going to four mana otherwise is uh maybe a bit questionable um Overall, I think this is a very good Friday Night Magic level deck, where, like, if you want to go and do something and your friends will go, like, holy shit, that deck is really cool, like, this is your jam. This is what you are looking for. Is this the most competitive thing in the world? No, absolutely not. But the games that you are going to win are, you are going to win by an absolute landslide, and they are hella fun. Um, I feel very good um, about what I put together here. Um, note, there is a very similar uh, deck that exists in Modern. That is what I used as a starting point for this deck. Um, I had to retool the mana base, and like Essence Warden seemed like a no-brainer once we were switching over to Legacy. Um, and I, and I, I mucked with the numbers quite a bit. Um, and like I had to rebuild a sideboard for, from scratch, for example, as well. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I'm doing Legacy Modern and Vintage content seven days a week. And if you haven't already thrown me a like, throw me a like. If you want to play the deck, check out the deck list in the video description on Top Deck, and everything else you might need to know is in there as well. Have a great rest of the day. What an awesome league. John, I, I hope you're happy with uh, my brew around Harmonic Prodigy. I know it wasn't your you know original idea with the whole Chain of Smog thing, um, but... I think I, I think I produced some grade A entertainment today.